Hey, how's it going? Hope your day is going well. Life can be kind of rough sometimes, so hopefully this little video can cheer you up. I'm your host, The Bread Pirate, and here are 16 useless yet fascinating fun facts you probably did not know about Breath of the Wild. Let's begin. Pekengo is a kindly artist that travels all across Hyrule in Breath of the Wild. But if you've never stopped to look at his paintings, let me tell you, they are uh, interesting. Remember Bold and Brash from SpongeBob? That painting that the art critics said, More like belongs in the trash! <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 okay, wait. I'm not gonna go that far. But I am going to say very nicely that Pekengo should consider getting a day job. In less controversial news, I discovered that when Pekengo spawns into the world, he pulls his canvas from his backpack, which is a really nice detail. Claymores are an incredibly popular weapon choice in Breath of the Wild, but there's one small detail on the Knight Claymore you probably did not realize. It actually has Hylian text written on it. When translated into English, it says, Hyrule Kingdom, power, wisdom, courage. Thank you to Ren Samara on the Breath of the Wild subreddit for translating that. A Reddit user by the name of Jaboy personally showed me this really cool trick a few months ago. If you go to the Sajan, Sarjan, Sarjan, Sarjan Bridge on the Floria River and jump off the waterfall nearby, you'll be greeted by a strange jump animation. Here's what it looks like from the side. Nice approach. You know, it kind of reminds me of the cool jump flips that Link does in Majora's Mask, but just a, a lot more, uh... Soggy. I think that's a good word for it. Soggy. Apparently, if you are extremely quick, you can steal ancient parts from decayed guardians before they wake up. I was not able to replicate this, but this footage from Darkstorm 3 proves that it is possible. The only catch to this, according to Darkstorm, is that the decayed guardian on Mount Drenna is the only guardian this works with. So, <laughs> uh, good luck pulling this off. It takes some very precise timing. Did you know? The box art for the Wii U version of Breath of the Wild has some wildly inaccurate information on it. It claims that aside from your Wii U gamepad, you can play the game with a classic controller, a Wiimote and nunchuck, or a single individual Wiimote, which is not only absolutely ridiculous, it is also super, super wrong. There's not even enough buttons on this thing to pull that off. The game doesn't support any of these controllers and trying to use them will simply do nothing. So how on earth did this manage to get on the box art? Did you know? There are several cool details hidden within the Gerudo throne room. For instance, you'll notice that the throne has a large amount of pillows on it, a stool, and a small set of stairs. That's because the throne is too large for the current ruler, Riju. Unlike the previous ruler, Urbosa, who was freaking big and didn't need no stool. Although I guess she, uh, she still did need pillows. Pillows are a big person thing too. Big people and small people both need them pillows. Additionally, and unsurprisingly, the stools and pillows are decorated with the images of sand seals, which are Riju's favorite animal. You'll also notice that there are letters scattered around the room. These letters are part of the Gerudo alphabet and can be translated into English. For instance, on the back of the throne, it reads, Gerudo, a resilient desert flower. Facing the sun's gaze, Gerudo grows brilliant while others fade. Now, I'm not gonna read every single pillar in the room because that would take too long, but if you're curious about it, I found this awesome blog post which translates everything in the room and explains how it got translated. So if you would like to see that, look in the description below. And one last detail I gotta show you about this place is that the carpet in front of the throne is actually held in place by several metal poles that are bolted to the ground. Now, that's some attention to detail if I've ever seen it. If you have the DLC for Breath of the Wild, you've probably stumbled upon this monstrosity, the Tingle outfit. Why are you running? Why are you running? Despite being as terrifying as it is, there is a funny secret tied to this outfit. If you wear the full Tingle garb and approach an NPC, they will actually reel back in terror. Normally, you get this reaction when wearing scary suits of armor, like the Dark Link outfit, or Phantom Ganon armor. So it appears that somebody at Nintendo is trying to send us a message about Tingle. 
It's common for there to be changes between the Japanese and American versions of Zelda games, but this change comes as a huge surprise. In the Japanese version of Breath of the Wild, the adventure log, which is where you keep track of your quests, is written in the first person, which means that all the entries are written as if Link is writing in a diary. Meanwhile, in the American version, all the text is written in the third second person, which removes all of the emotion and quirkiness that the Japanese text was supposed to be conveying. For instance, the Japanese version of the quest Captured Memories reads, I finished visiting all 13 of the locations in the old pictures. I remembered everything I've been through together with Princess Zelda. In those memories of mine, Princess Zelda always strived to complete the task burdened unto her. Even if it's just a moment sooner, I want to save her as quickly as possible. I want to see her smile again with those eyes of mine. Did you know? When you save an NPC that is traveling on the road and gets attacked by a monster, they will only reward you with a single green rupee if the monster was a small chew, even if it's one of the ones that oozes fire and whatever. This seems to happen because NPCs give better or worse rewards depending on how dangerous the monster was. For instance, instead of a green rupee, I got food for defeating this Yiga archer because he's considered more dangerous by the NPCs. However, there is one exception to this rule. Guardians. For some unholy reason, if you save an NPC from a guardian, then they will always give you nothing. No reward at all. Nada. So I guess this means the NPCs are more afraid of Chews than they are of guardians. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for- No, 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 no. Get out of here, MatPat. You're not, we're, we're not done yet. Oh, yeah, sure. That's what you would say. Go back into your MatPat box. Go you away. Are excrement. <laughs> you know, I think many people forget that the Lord of the Mountain is a horse too. I mean, sure, he's a ghost horse with spider eyes and he disappears if you leave him alone for three seconds, but on the inside, he's still a horse. Which means if you try to feed him apples and carrots, he will gladly eat them just like any other horse. I highly recommend trying it if you have the chance. Contributing to the list of weird animations we have in this game, I present to you the No Bow Hand. While you're walking with a bow in your hand, use the quick select menu to unequip your bow. Keep walking after you leave this menu and you will see that Link's left arm is bent and won't move as much. This glitch will only last as long as you keep moving, so if you stop walking, then it'll go away. What I really love about this glitch is that it makes it look like Link is holding an invisible cup of joe in one of his hands while running. That's just a beautiful image in my head. Here's another fun fact for you. Arrows can be shot into certain food types or materials to create an arrow porcupine. This works with ancient arrows as well and can lead to some funny looking effects. Oh yeah, baby. Link stabbing dozens of arrows into a nut. This is peak YouTube content. As you would expect, you can pick up your arrows after doing this, but be careful because if you pick up your item before you pick up your arrows, then all the arrows that were on the item will disappear and you won't get any of them back. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Probably. Now quit being emo. We got more fun facts to cover. Okay, um, remember a few minutes ago when I was talking about the Gerudo throne room? Man, those were the days. Those are, those, are, those are some good times. Well, after recording footage for that section of the video, I realized something kind of weird about Gerudo Town. Above all the shops in Gerudo Town, there are symbols and signs which represent what the shops are about. You got arrows for the archery shop, a crescent moon for the inn, this thing which is, I think, supposed to be a mushroom for the shroom shop. You got wheat stalks for the, uh, uh, wheat store. Kind of a weird side hustle. I, I, I'm certainly not complaining, it's just kind of weird. Anyways, I've overstated my point. There are lots of symbols on all the shops. On top of that, some of the shops have giant objects hovering over them, like the bar, which has a giant bottle, the jewelry shop, which has a giant necklace, and the tailor, who has a giant, uh, bra hovering over the storefront. A giant bra. Yep. I used to think it was just a weird looking tarp, but you can see right here, side by side comparison, it is definitely a Gerudo bra. Oh, what's that? Oh, <clears throat> okay, I just got done talking with one of my Discord moderators, Clover, and she just informed me it is not a bra, it is a top. I have no idea what the difference is, but whatever it is, that thing is really big, and I have no idea how I'm just noticing it. Okay. You know what? I think we've dwelt on this long enough. That was a fun fact. Okay. Come on, Link. Let's get out of... Uh, wait. 
Where's Link? Link? Oh, no! Oh, why? No! Oh, come on, Link. Get out of there. That's not, that's not family friendly. Bad Link. Bad Link! Unbelievable. The nerve of some people. All right, what else do we got on this list? Oh, okay. Hey, we're on to our last fun fact. Did you know? Lizzlefoes have crazy forearm strength. By that, I mean that they can hurdle stone pebbles at you, or peblets, with a single arm. They don't even break a sweat while doing it. Look at that form. Nice. How do they even grab those things? There's like no place to grip them. You know, people, they're always talking about how moblins are so big and so strong and they can throw boca blends, but these guys, these are the real chads. Thank you once again for watching the video. If you fancy doing things like subscriptions or likes, then hey, you can do that. But I will leave it entirely up to you. Also, if you liked this type of video, I have at least one more of it coming out this summer. Until I see you next time, have fun subscribing to Saplo! That's right, you were expecting an outro, but instead it was me, Saplo enthusiast! Saplo for president, baby. And you know what? Joey for vice president, too. We're gonna fix America one Minecraft video at a time. Heck yeah, baby! Woo!